Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to set up continuous integration and delivery for any Laravel project using AWS and Bitbucket. I will be showing you how to automate your build, testing, and deploy process. Here is how it's going to work. Once any code is merged with your Git master branch, we will use Bitbucket pipelines so we could build our project and run all our tests or lint scripts. Once our build and tests pass, our production server will be automatically updated to contain the latest revision of master for our Laravel project. To accomplish this, we will be using AWS EC2 instance to host our production server. Now it's optional if you want to add staging, which is basically a duplicate for your production server. Now, we will also use AWS RDS instance to run MySQL 8 server for our Laravel project. We will also use AWS S3 bucket to store our revisions. We will also use uh, AWS code deploy to run deployments and AWS server manager to store and populate our EMV file. Finally, we will use Bitbucket to store our code repository and run our pipeline and we will use bash to create our scripts so right now i have hosted an empty laravel project on an aws ec2 instance this is the ip address right here so let's go ahead and add a new change to our code i'm going to basically add a new title tag to uh, this main page so on the code editor let's go ahead and add a new change to our code so i'm gonna add a new h1 tag i'm gonna say hello world and let's save this change and open our terminal now we want to basically merge our work or commit our changes to our master branch because all the deployment will start once any code is merged to the master branch so right now I am on my master branch. I'm going to add my work. And I'm going to push those changes. Now I have stored my code inside this Bitbucket repository. And to show you guys, I'm going to go to pipelines. And you can see right now, this is our test push right here. And it's currently in progress. Now, after waiting for a few minutes, the build took around five minutes. Let's go ahead and see what happened here. And you can see our first step we were building and testing. And I have a few scripts here that was running. We built our server. We built our project. We ran our tests. Then we deployed it to production. Now, if you want to add staging, it's very easy to do. Staging is basically your pro a production server. So it's literally a copy of this part right here. Now, let's go back to our website and let's refresh. So now you can see here, our chains got uh, deployed without us having to do anything other than merge our code with master. Before we get started, I would like to say, please make sure that you're fully aware behind all the costs for everything that we're going to be using in this tutorial. For Bitbucket, I think you get around 50 minutes free every month for your pipeline build time. So let me show you guys quickly. Bitbucket, uh, let's go pricing. And in here, you should be able to see that on the free account, you basically get uh, 50 minutes free every month for your build minutes. Now, let me show you what happened here. So this is some sample work that when I was working on this, you could see it took me two minutes here. So you could get an idea how much uh, build time uh, an empty Laravel app would be. So I wouldn't say 50 minutes is a lot, but if, you're, uh, if you don't want to spend for, let's say, uh, so this is, it says $3 here, but it's actually three times five. So it's 15. So the standard plan would be $15. 
and you get around 2,500 minutes and this is what I'm using and this is more than uh, enough for small projects. Now for the AWS, make sure that you use their pricing calculator because pricing on AWS is different per region and per service. So if you go ahead and type AWS pricing calculator and you should be able to uh, create an estimate here. Other than this, you should also be able to go to your cost explorer. And in here, you should be able to see your daily costs. So this is my, uh, this is the account that I use for all my tutorials and you can see here how much I'm paying for, uh, per month. To create a new Bitbucket repository, the first thing you're gonna do is go to your Bitbucket homepage. From here, you're gonna click on the plus symbol on the left and create new repository. Let's call this project Laravel DevOps. And I'm gonna place this inside my tutorials or you could create a new folder. And let's go ahead and create repository. I'm going to copy the URL and place it inside my notepad. So, now we're going to create a new Laravel project and we're going to push that to our new repository. Now I'm going to be using Composer to create a new Laravel project and I'm going to call it Laravel-DevOps. Once that's done, let's go ahead and push our changes. So I'm going to go inside my new project directory. Now let's initialize a new Git directory. Let's add all our work and let's commit our changes. So I'm going to say first push and let's add our remote origin so get remote add origin and the origin would be our URL for our Bitbucket account let's make sure that worked and now let's go ahead and push our changes so the U flag will allow me to track the master branch because right now see I am on local master branch but it's not tracking my uh, remote master branch. So the U flag will track the master. The force flag, because we want to replace everything, this is our first push. And we're doing this on origin master. Now let's check what happened to our Bitbucket repository. So let's refresh. Bitbucket Pipelines is an integrated continuous integration and development service built into Bitbucket. It allows you to automatically build, test, and even deploy your code based on a configuration file. So to get started, on the left here, you want to click on Pipelines. From here, you want to create your first pipeline. And let's go ahead and select the starter template and so you can see here bitbucket pipelines.yaml this file will be placed inside your root uh, directory folder for your project so we will cover all this in a bit let's go ahead and commit this work now let's go ahead and check what happened to our source and you can see that the file is inside here. And once you have this file now, the pipeline will activate. So see right now the steps build, test, lint, security scan. So you can see these are the steps written here. This is the first one, build and test. They're just echoing text here. Step two, lint. Step three, security scan.
Now, before we get started, I would like to note that uh, since we have the Bitbucket pipeline XAML file placed in our main directory, every work or commit that you do on your master branch will basically trigger the pipeline. Since we created this file using the Bitbucket interface, let's go ahead and uh, pull our work. And let's open our code editor. From here, let's go ahead and open our pipeline XAML file. I'm going to erase these comments quickly. And I'm going to remove the security scan step. Again, you can add as many steps as you like. And I'm going to comment this part out for now because I don't want to keep triggering these steps. Now, remember that Bitbucket basically uses Docker images to create for you a server where you could build, test, and do your deployment or whatever other steps that you want. For this tutorial, we will use the PHP FPM image. So let's go ahead and erase this. And you want to write PHP, add a colon, and you want to specify the PHP version that you want to use. Then dash FPM. Let's go ahead and save this. And now let's go ahead and create a new folder in our main directory. And I'm going to call it DevOps. You can call it wherever you like. And now we want to create a new file inside our DevOps folder. And let's call it build-server.sh. Now remember that we're using bash. So let's go ahead and add our bin bash command. Oops. So this file will basically run all our commands to build our server. And just to be clear, this is not building our production server. This is only building our, uh, I would say, testing server for the Bitbucket pipeline. This is what we're going to build here. Now, just like building any other server, the first step should be update. So we're going to write apt-qy update. And... Uh, the Y flag will basically prevent us from getting... Um, so you guys know when you sometimes try to install, uh, let's say, a package or something on the command line, you get like a prompt that says, uh, do you want to continue? Enter Y or N. So the, the Y flag would prevent this prompt from showing up. And those kind of prompts will break your scripts. The Q flag is short for quiet, which makes the output display less information suitable for logging and leaving out the progress indicators. We're using it so we don't clutter our log files. Our second step would be to install any package that we need. So let's say for example, we want to install uh, curl, git, zip, unzip. So whatever you want to install, go ahead and add it here. Now, if you want to install PHP extensions, Basically, you're going to use the docker php extension install command and you want to specify all the extensions you want to install. For example, MySQL, ctype, bcmath, zip, and the list goes on. Now, you don't have to specify your php version here because that's going to be already specified for you based on the php image that you have specified inside your Bitbucket pipeline XAML. So... This docker php extension install will install all the extensions here based on php 8.0 or whatever version you have specified here. Now we're going to install composer using the curl command. To do that you run curl and you want to add the silent flag so you would basically uh, display less output and you want to also add the show error flag. And for this, we're going to use the Composer original installer. So it's going to be getcomposer.org slash installer. And this is a PHP file, so let's uh, run it using PHP. And we want to specify two parameters. The install directory, which will be inside user local bin. This will make uh, Composer accessible globally and also the file name, and let's call that Composer. 
Now, there are other useful flags that you can use. If you double click on your uh, link, you should be able to uh, see it download here. And let's go ahead and edit this file. So you can see this is a PHP file. And when you run it using PHP, you have few flags that you can set and you can see them all in here. Now, our last step will be to install npm, and you can easily do that with apt-qy install npm. Now, let's go ahead and commit and push our changes. So, I'm gonna do git add, commit, and let's say uh, server build script. And let's go ahead and push our changes. Let's try that again. Now, let's go to our bit bucket and check what happened to our pipeline. So currently it's in progress. Now our build is complete and we have a failed status. So let's see what happened here. So let's click on this entry. And you can see our first step build and test. We failed on the on running the DevOps build server script. And the reason is permission denied. We can't access this file. So this is actually a very easy fix. So when you're running bash scripts, always add when you're using Bitbucket pipelines, always add bash. And let's just add uh, this just for convention purposes. Now, let's go ahead and push our changes. And let's see what happened to our pipeline. Now it looks like our build passed, so let's go ahead and see what happened. So for our build script, let's expand that. And you can see here all your uh, logs. This is all the scripts that we ran. Now we have another step here, lint, that's basically just doing an echo. Now both these steps are running in parallel. So if we go back to our code, you'll see here we're using the parallel flag. So what this means is that they run the same time, but since they run the same time, the lint step basically doesn't have access to, let's say, uh, our built uh, server, and once we start adding other scripts like our application. So this would be good to do like uh, other things that don't really relate to your uh, server or code being built. And lint just makes sense. You don't need a server for that. You can just run uh, your lint scripts to check if your code is valid. Now, before we can build our Laravel project, we need an SQL server or MySQL server or actually any other service. So if you're using, let's say, for example, Postgres, MySQL, Redis or any other service, then we need to uh, create it in our configuration file. So basically we write definitions and services. And for this service, we're using MySQL. Again, this could be anything else. And for the MySQL image, we're going to use uh, MySQL 8.0. You can change the version as you like. And let's... Uh, add our environment variables. So my SQL database would be uh, homestead. And uh, let's use a random root password. And let's go ahead and add uh, my SQL user, which is also homestead. And my SQL password which will use secret. Again, you can modify these values as you like, but th you shouldn't really care too much about this because this is only running for the duration of our pipeline. 
Um, we want to run basically our tests, our software. We want to make sure our migrations are not breaking our uh, project. So to be able to use now this service inside our steps, we will need to uh, add it here. So let's go ahead under the step, add services. And we're going to add our MySQL service. Now remember, the same thing, if you're using Redis or any other service, this is the same way, that's how you add it. Now, let's go ahead and uh, create ourselves a new file. So, we want to add uh, DevOps, so let's call it uh, Build Project. So, let me create this file quickly. Inside DevOps, Build Project. Now, on my last, one of my last videos, I went into depth on how to build your Laravel project. So if you guys are brand new to building Laravel projects, I recommend you watch that video first. It's called how to deploy any Laravel application on AWS. So to install our application, we need to install our dependencies. So composer install, and I'm going to use the no interaction flag to prevent any uh, prompt from breaking our script. And I'm going to also use uh, npm install. Now we're going to create a new EMV file. Remember, we can't store this EMV file in our uh, repository. So we have to create a dummy EMV file. Let's call it pipelines. And we don't care about all this. We need it to... Uh, so we need to set our at PMV and you can set it to local or production and your app key let's go ahead and enter some gibberish and for your DB connection we're using MySQL as we defined it inside our Bitbucket YAML file so let's go ahead and add um, our host and it's we're using local host so 127 Point zero point zero point one, and our database name is homestead and our username was also homestead and finally our password was secret you want to make sure that these are exactly the same as you would have them inside your actual emv file now let's go back to our build project script and now we want to basically create a link between our emv file and pipeline file so we do that by using ln dash f dash s and our emv file name and our actual emv file so now we created uh, a link between them now once we have that done let's go ahead and run our migrations so remember, this is also a good test to make sure that uh, the change isn't really breaking our database. And let's go ahead and uh, generate our app key. And so if you guys are using, uh, let's say, uh, Passport, then you want to go ahead and add the PHP Artisan Passport install or any other command that you would need. You don't have to know them all right now. Once you start running your uh, application on the pipeline, it will fail and you should get some useful errors on what you're missing so let's go ahead and save all this and uh, actually one more thing let's run npm run production so let's save this let's commit it and push it Now let's go ahead and check what happened to our pipeline. So let's go back to pipelines. And looks like our pipeline passed. Let's quickly check what happened here. So for our build script, we ran these two scripts. The build project, let's see. So composer installed. We ran our migrations and we uh, ran npm run production. So this is in one way a small test 
let's say someone submits a migration that breaks or same thing someone does something and breaks the npm script um, i wouldn't really use this as a major way to test your application but it's just one way to test There is a lot of different uh, linters you can use for your front end and back end code. If you plan on using any, then you want to just run your uh, lint right here. For this demo, I'm going to uh, comment this part out. And since we commented this out, we only have one step inside the parallel. So this will not work. We will need to erase this. And when we erase this, we have to realign our step to here. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you're using a uh, visual code, you can do control, shift and alt and press the down arrow and you can do them all together. There we go. I think that's uh, no one more. So that's good. Now let's go ahead and create our test script. So I'm going to add a new uh, script. Let's uh, call it run tests. And let's go ahead and create it. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to start our server. So we want to do PHP artisan serve and sleep five. So we want to basically start our PHP server or our Laravel and sleep five is just to give it some time. So once we execute our next commands, it would be ready. Now to run our PHP unit test, you would simply uh, do uh, use the vendor folder inside bin, run your PHP unit script. If you have any other testing that you're doing, you want to add all your scripts in here. Now, once you have all your build scripts down, you want to commit and uh, save this change to your master branch. And actually, I'm going to remove these two from here. So deployment to staging is literally exactly the copy paste of deployment. So it's going to be exactly the same. I'm going to remove all this and clean up the file here. Let's save and go ahead and push your change. Now we pushed our change right here and our pipeline succeeded. So let's see what happened in our script. And you can see that we ran only two tests and um, they were successful. If the tests were to fail, then this pipeline will fail and you will see the output in here. In AWS, IAM stands for Identity and Access Management. It lets you access and manage your AWS services and resources securely. In order for us to automate our deployment process, we will need to give our EC2 instance access to code deploy so that we can pull our latest code revision and deploy it on our server whenever new code is merged on our master branch and our pipelines build successfully. We will also need to give our EC2 instance access to S3 bucket. We will use S3 bucket to store our code revisions. So IAM basically lets you create and manage your AWS users and groups and it also allows you to set permissions to allow or deny user access to your resources. So I am user groups are basically a collection of users. User groups let you specify permissions for multiple users. Now let's go ahead and go to I am on the top search for I am and in here on the left you have user groups let's go ahead and create ourselves a new user group let's call this Laravel DevOps you can name this whatever name you like and you need to give uh, 
S3 full access. So S3 full, let's search for that. And let's add that. And we also need to give um, AWS code deploy full access. Or let's remove the S3 filter. Actually, let's just search for code deploy. And you can see it should be right here. And let's go ahead and add these two. Now, once our pipeline builds in uh, Bitbucket, and let's say it succeeds, we need to give Bitbucket access to our code deploy and to our S3 bucket. We will cover S3 in a bit. So let's go ahead and go to users on the left and add a new user for Bitbucket. Let's call it Laravel DevOps user. And let's uh, check the access key uh, here. Next. And you want to make sure that you have um, your group that we just created selected here. And you want to click next. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and create this user. Now you want to download this uh, CSV, which will basically contain your access key and uh, secret key. Now I'm going to add those to my uh, notepad. So my user was Laravel DevOps user. The access key, let's copy this. And the password, let's copy this as well. And yeah, that's right. Now we're going to use service roles so we could um, create a new role for our EC2 instance and allow our EC2 instance access for uh, code deploy and to uh, S3 bucket. Now let's go ahead and click on roles on the left and let's create a new role. You want to select uh, AWS services and uh, EC2 and go ahead and click on next and you want to add two policies one for code deploy so let's search code deploy so you would add the uh, code deploy full access and you want to also add one for the s3 so let's add that and click next and let's call this uh, user EC or Laravel DevOps role. So an S3 bucket is basically a cloud storage. We're going to use it to store uh, revisions of our code every time uh, we deploy it. So this way we have backups and uh, we have the actual code files that we want to deploy. So let's go ahead and search S3 on the top. And let's create a new bucket. And let's call this uh, bucket uh, Laravel DevOps. And I'm going to add this uh, name to my notepad. And it might be useful right now to also make a, a note on your region. So in here, we're creating this in the US East 1 region. And we want to make sure we have uh, all uh, public access blocked. And let's, uh, let's create this uh, bucket. Once you have that done, let's go ahead and copy our region. So you want to go to uh, access point. So you want to go to uh, your properties and you want to copy your region here. 
So let's copy this and add it to our notepad. Now let's go ahead and create an EC2 instance for our production server. You can also create another one if you want for your staging server. So the steps are exactly the same from here. We're going to launch a new instance and we're going to use a Ubuntu server. And I'm going to keep it micro. Let's uh, go to configure instance. Now, it's really important in here to uh, give I am role. So remember that account that we created, the, sorry, the Laravel uh, DevOps role. So you want to have that assigned. Now, we want to add also, so you can here select your desired storage. So we want to also add a tag for code deploy to use. It could be anything. We just need a key. And let's call this one uh, code deploy. So this key will be used to identify this instance. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, review. Actually, let's create uh, some security groups. So we need the SSH. I'm going to select my IP. We need the HTTP access and HTTPS access. And that should be... Uh, that should be all. Let's review and launch. And I'm going to create a new key pick, uh, key pair. I'm going to call it uh, demo or Laravel DevOps. And let's go ahead and launch our instance. Now let's go ahead and create our database. So we're going to search for RDS. And we want to click on create database. And we want to select uh, MySQL or you could select your desired database. I'm keeping mine at eight and I'm going to call this uh, Laravel DevOps. You can call this whatever you like. And uh, I'm going to select the smallest size available. So that's burstable and micro. I'm going to also reduce the storage. So I'm going to select solid state 20 gig. That's the minimum. I'm going to remove the storage auto scaling and I'm going to remove the multi AZ deployment. If this is an actual app that you're deploying, I recommend you keep this turned on. For my demo, I don't need this. It will uh, cost me around uh, $12.50 to give me a standby instance that I'm going to be uh, probably destroying in a few minutes. So let's, uh, let's create this database. And for the password, let's auto-generate that. So let's go ahead and create. Now I'm going to click on view credential details and I'm going to grab my uh, master password and add it to my notepad. So my RDS instance, the password is uh, here, the user is admin. And we will need to uh, find out the endpoint so we could uh, connect to it. So we want to go to connectivity and we want to copy this endpoint here. And let's add that to our notepad. Before we uh, connect to our EC2 instance, let's go ahead and grab our public IP address. So let's go to EC2 and to instances and let's click on our instance. Let's copy the public IP address here. And actually, I'm going to give this also a label name. So I'm going to call it uh, Laravel DevOps. And I'm going to uh, add my uh, IP address in my notepad.
Now let's go back to uh, the file that we downloaded our PEM file for our EC2 instance. Let's open git bash here and let's connect to it. So we're going to use SSH dash I to specify the PEM file. And the username was Ubuntu at our IP address. Now we want to basically install a code deploy agent. What that does is basically allows our EC2 instance to communicate with our code deploy application. So let's go ahead and uh, install code deploy. So first we want to run sudo apt update so we could update our server. Then you want to run uh, sudo apt install and we want to install Ruby dash full by the way guys all these commands are going to be posted down on the description now you want to uh, install uh, wget so sudo apt install wget and you want to make sure you are inside your home ubuntu folder now let's uh, use wget to uh, connect to our instance so here's how we're gonna install it wget https and uh, we want to write our bucket name i will tell you guys how to grab that dot s3 dot our region identifier so our region was us east one and dot amazon aws dot com slash latest slash install now to find the bucket name, oops, let's go back to our browser and we want to go to uh, docs.aws.amazon.com slash code deploy. From here, you want to search for uh, resource kit and select the first option. Scroll down here. Now, based on your region, this is your bucket name. In my case, I am US East 1, so I will copy this. Let's go back to our notepad and let's add it inside here. Now, let's go ahead and copy this and let's go back to our terminal and let's add it here. So, let's do ls. So we, inst we basically downloaded this file, install. Now, to run this file, we need to give it permission. So we got to do chmod plus x slash install. So now we can run the file. So you want to write sudo and let's select the file. Then you want to do auto. And uh, you want to make sure that we are logging these output. So let's run this now to check if uh, code deploy was installed let's uh, check the status so we do sudo service code deploy agent status and now we can see that it's active and it's running if yours is not running you do sudo service code deploy agent start Now, remember that service roles are used to grant permissions to an AWS service so it can access AWS resource. We need to get our code deploy application to uh, connect with our S3. So we need to create a new service role. So let's go ahead and search for IAM. And on the left, we want to go to roles. And let's create a new role. And down here, we want to select code deploy. So it should be down here if we search for code deploy. So right here, let's select that option. And you want to select the first one right here, your use case, code deploy. And let's go ahead and click on next permission. And let's go ahead and click next. And next. 
let's name this one code Laravel DevOps code deploy. And let's go ahead and create this role. To create our code deploy application, let's search for code deploy on the top. Now from here, you want to go to applications and you want to create a new application. Let's call our application Laravel DevOps. And for the platform, you want to select EC2 on premise create application a deployment group is the AWS code deploy entity for grouping EC2 instances or AWS Lambda functions in a code deploy deployment for EC2 deployments it is a set of instances associated with an application that you target for deployment now we will need to create a deployment group so let's go ahead and click on create a deployment group is the AWS code deploy entity for grouping EC2 instances or AWS lambda functions in a code deploy deployment for EC2 deployments it is a set of instances associated with an application that you target for deployment now we will need to create a deployment group so let's go ahead and click on create for the deployment group name let us call it Laravel DevOps and let's name it production for our to represent our production server if you have staging you want to create another deployment group but with a staging name or something else to allow you to distinguish between them for the service role you want to select the one that we just created and for the deployment type you want to make sure you have the in place selected for the environment configuration we want to select amazon ec2 instance now to associate our code deploy application with our ec2 instance if you guys remember we created a tag if we click here on the key that tag was called code deploy actually now that I think about it it would have been better if we called it production because if you want to create for example a staging so you would basically create another EC2 instance and you would give it a different uh, tag name then you would be able to create a different uh, group here and select that tag now we want to keep uh, all these options so for the load balancing I'm gonna actually disable this option I recommend you actually have a load balancer but this is a big topic in its own I will cover this in a future video so here's what load balancers do let's say right now you have uh, you have to update your server obviously there's gonna be a few seconds where your server will be inactive now a code uh, a load balancer allows you to have let's say for example 10 instances running and basically your traffic would be redirected to the instances with the best health so basically it would keep your uptime to 100 percent but to get the most out of load balancers you need to have like let's say at least two instances running for your project so let's go ahead and create deployment In order for us to deploy our latest code revisions to S3, we will need to tell code deploy that our revisions is ready. To communicate with AWS using Bitbucket, we will use the AWS CLI, which is a command line interface that provides us with tools to help us interact with AWS using the command line. Now, to install the AWS CLI, we're gonna go to Google and search for AWS CLI install Linux and you should be able to find the first link in here 
and in here we want to scroll down and we want to basically select these commands now let's go back to our code editor and you want to open your bitbucket pipelines file and let's go ahead and uncomment uh, the staging sorry the deployment part for our production server now since we don't have uh, staging right now i'm gonna comment this out trigger manual only works when you have a step behind this one and the step would be basically another deployment now for the name we're gonna keep it as is for the script let's go ahead and create a new one so we want to run bash devops and let's call our new script build for production so what we're gonna do right now is we want to build our project then send it to s3 store it there now let's go ahead and create this file so i'm gonna copy this build for production now just a note if you decide to build your project like including your composer dependencies and node dependencies remember that we're storing this in the cloud so for every deployment every revision you're storing a copy of your revision and if you're including your vendors folder and your node modules you would basically uh, use a lot of space so it would be a trade-off do you want to basically build your project and store it in s3 then basically once it's uh, deployed it's uh, already built or do you want to actually build it on your server so that's completely up to you now for a basic laravel project you don't really need to install node modules on your production server unless if you had to so for our example let's go ahead and install npm and let's go ahead and uh, run npm install to install our dependencies and do npm run production now we need to install the aws cli so the aws cli basically gives us uh, command line tools that we can use to run uh, aws uh, services so let's go to google and actually let me erase this let's go and search for aws cli install linux and you should have it on your first result and let's go all the way down and let's uh, copy this let's go back to our code and let's paste it in here so notice that this one is actually installing a zip file so once we run the installer we need to actually remove the file so we do rm-rf slash aws to remove this folder after the install we also want to do uh, rm-f aws cli v2.zip and i'm going to remove the sudo because we're already running these commands as root now let's go ahead and save our work and just one more thing i actually forgot to add the build server script so when you run these steps here they don't carry over here so we're gonna have to copy the build server script and run that first then we build our production now before we can actually create our deploy scripts we need to set up some environment variables for our bitbucket repository so we could access them inside our deploy script so let's open notepad now we want to know our aws secret access key and that would be the long string basically and we want to know our aws access key id and that would be the shorter string and we want to know our application name so let's go ahead and grab that from our code deploy so let's go to code deploy applications 
and you should find your application name right here copy this and let's add it we want to also uh, we want to know our aws default region and ours was us east one if you forgot uh, or if you don't know how to grab your region basically if you go back to your amazon homepage you should find it right here or even right here and we also want to know our deployment group name so we have only a production server if you have staging you would just create another group name here duplicate this for staging and uh, let's click on our application and our group name was Laravel DevOps production and finally we want to know our s3 bucket the bucket name and you can we had that right here now let's create these in uh, Bitbucket. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to. So let's go to our repository. Let's go to repository settings. Scroll down all the way. It should be right here. Repository variables. So in here, we want to copy basically these values. So the access key. We want to make sure it is uh, secured. Let's add our app key ID. And let's add our application name. And we want to remove the secured flag. Oops, let's copy this. And the AWS default region. Uh, deployment group name and finally the s3 bucket name now we have everything that we need to create our deploy script so let's go ahead and add a new file I'm going to call it deploy production.sh. Let's save this and let's create a new file. Now, the first thing we want to know is our hash for our Git repository. So we want to know our latest commit hash. We easily know that by using hash to create a variable. Git rev parse short head. That's how we grab the latest hash. We want to create a new bundle. And we want to store it inside our S3. So let's call this bundle hash.tar.gz. That's we're going to be creating basically a zip file. And we want to also know our S3 endpoint, so let's create a variable for that. And if you guys remember, we had the S3 bucket name right here. So let's go ahead and copy this. And let's go back to our code editor and let's add it in here. So the endpoint would be S3 colon two slashes your bucket name slash bundles this is basically where we're storing our app this is the url basically and actually for the name i'm gonna add the bundle dash the hash so that would be a better name and let me uh, surround this with quotation marks now the first thing we want to do is we want to remove all the old bundles so Let's do it this way, tar.gz. Now we want to create basically a tar file. So we do it, we use tar and we want to exclude all our get files. We don't want to commit any or store any get files. We want to also uh, 
exclude our storage logs files and we want to also exclude our vendor files Be or you don't have to exclude the vendor files you can uh, send it to your server already built but the problem is you're gonna use a lot of storage on your s3 for every single commit so if storage is not an issue for you i would actually recommend that you uh, create it here so let's uh, add this and what's left is uh, artifacts so let's do a uh, exclude the emv file now let's go ahead and create our bundle so we're gonna use the z now let's go ahead and create our bundle so to do that it's simple let's use the zcf flag add bundle dash t to specify the configuration for our bundle and let's call we're gonna have to create this file bundle.conf and we want to basically uh, specify all the columns that we want to or actually folders that or files that we want to store so let's quickly create that so inside our laravel project we will create a new file called uh, bundle.com and we need to add it to our root folder so let's move it now what you want to do here is basically specify every single file that or folder that you want to uh, include in your bundle now basically what i did here is i just included every single file here and uh, yeah so you want to uh, tweak this around it's up to you note i am including my node modules just to demonstrate that uh, you don't really have to uh, build things on your production server but uh, yeah so i'll keep this here and now let's save our work and let's go back to our build script so right now we want to actually send this star file to our aws s3 bucket so here's how we do it we're gonna use the cli and we're gonna write aws and s3 and we're gonna copy our bundle and it's for the s3 endpoint and basically that's pretty much it now let's uh, go ahead and uh, do an echo so we could see this in our logs and let's say uh, your code deploy s3 endpoint will be and let's add our s3 endpoint so this is where this is the link to where our revision will be stored or our bundle now let's go ahead and send that so we want to create our deployment we do aws deploy create deployment and we want to specify our application name and we, we had that coming from our emv file now let's go ahead and create our bundle so we're gonna use the z now let's go ahead and create our bundle so to do that it's simple let's use the zcf flag add bundle dash t to specify the configuration for our bundle and let's call we're gonna have to create this file bundle.conf and we want to basically uh, specify all the columns that we want to or actually folders that or files that we want to store so let's quickly create that so inside our laravel project we will create a new file called uh, bundle.com and we need to add it to our root folder so let's move it now 
what you want to do here is basically specify every single file that or folder that you want to uh, include in your bundle now basically what I did here is I just included every single file here and uh, yeah so you want to uh, tweak this around it's up to you note I am including my node modules just to demonstrate that uh, you don't really have to uh, build things on your production server but uh, yeah, so I'll keep this here and now let's save our work and let's go back to our build script. So right now we want to actually send this star file to our AWS S3 bucket. So here's how we do it. We're going to use the CLI and we're going to write AWS and S3 and we're going to copy our bundle and it's for the S3 endpoint and basically that's pretty much it now let's uh, go ahead and uh, do an echo so we could see this in our logs and let's say uh, your code deploy S3 endpoint will be, and let's add our S3 endpoint. So this is where, this is the link to where our revision will be stored or our bundle. Now let's go ahead and send that. So we want to create our deployment. We do AWS deploy, create deployment. And we want to specify our application name. And we, we had that coming from our EMV file. Now we also want to specify our deployment config name. And actually I forgot to add that to our variables. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. So let's go back to Bitbucket. So we want to go to our Bitbucket repository. We want to go to repository settings and let's go to uh, variables and we want to add a new variable for the value we're going to write code deploy actually let's remove the secured so code deploy default dot one at a time and let's go ahead and add that now let's go back to our code editor and from here, we want to actually add more flags. So we want to add the deployment group name. And let's go back to our notepad. And copy this group. And we want to also... Uh, overwrite if the file exists and finally let's set the s3 location and the bucket was s3 bucket or did we call it bucket let's copy this and the bundle type is tjz that's our file extension and the key is bundles slash bundle let's go ahead and save all this and let's commit our work now i went ahead and i committed my work but my pipeline failed so if you see here i have an error the following requirements arguments are required application name now, I noticed I made a, a small mistake on my name here. So, this is supposed to be uh, dash not underscore. Also, another mistake I made here was in the S3 endpoint. I was supposed to call the S3 variable, not the actual value. And my final mistake was I didn't add a slash here. So, let's go ahead and save and push our changes.
Now, after I committed my work and pushed my changes to master branch, our pipeline ran and it succeeded. So let's check what happened on AWS. So let's go to code deploy. Let's go to deployment and see here, this is my latest deployment. It actually failed. Now let's click on this and see why. So let's click on view events. Now keep in mind, these are all the ev events you have. So they're basically your hooks. Once we, uh, we actually deploy the event on our server, we have those events that we can use to write our code to do things uh, when this event happens, for example, install. So we filled in the download bundle event. And it says here, the specified key does not exist. Now, this is an easy error to fix. Here's how you would fix this error. You have your S3 revision right here. This is the location. If you click on it, and click on it here again, you should be able to see this file stored. If you get this error, then it's 90% uh, of the time has to do with your name and most likely because of this folder. So if you go back to your code editor, and here is the issue. So for this S3 endpoint, basically I didn't add this slash here. So let's go ahead and save our work. So the build and the deployment pipelines have passed. Now let's check what happened on our AWS side. So let's go to code deploy and let's also open uh, S3. So let's check our bucket and let's go to bundles and see here, this is our bundle that we sent from our Bitbucket pipeline. Now let's go ahead and see what happened in the code deploy and our pipeline failed and let's see why. So let's go to view events and ours failed on the before install, which is perfect, exactly what we wanted to do. Now keep these in mind, these events, before install, install, after install, application start and validate service. Now let's check if our files were downloaded into our server. So you want to do ls and opt opt code deploy agent and from here let's go inside our deployment root folder and in here basically every time you uh, push your code your uh, files will be placed in a string that looks like this and it would be really hard to tell which where your files are but uh, i'm just showing you this to uh, demonstrate a point so Again, your files could be in one of these folders. This is completely random. I'm going to select this one. And lucky for me, this one is the right one because there is this deployment archive folder. So let's uh, go inside here. Now you can see this is your Laravel project files. The app spec file for Amazon EC2 deployment specifies your task definitions, container names, and container ports. It's also where you do your mapping. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a new uh, file and let's call it app spec.yaml. Oops, let me change the X to C and let's erase all this. So the first line you want to say your version. So right now we are 0.0. .0. OS is Linux. Now the files, basically we want to map our source, which is our main directory, to our destination. So that would be where we want to place our website on the server. So we're going to do that inside var w, triple w, and let's call our project folder Laravel DevOps. Now we have hooks that we can use 
to execute scripts. So let's go back to our Amazon code deploy. And in here, if you guys see this in the bottom, before install, install, after install, application start, and validate service. These are all different types of hooks you can use to uh, attach your code scripts. So I'll give you an example. We're gonna add, uh, we're gonna use the after install to uh, attach our scripts to build our server, run our migrations, and uh, do some other housekeeping work. So to use any uh, hook, basically you wanna write the name of it here, and you wanna specify now the scripts you wanna run. So the location, let's say we wanna create a new script inside our DevOps folder. Let's create a new folder called hooks and let's create a new file called after install.sh. And we want to run this file run as Ubuntu because we don't want to build or do anything on our project as root because that will not work. So let's save this and let's go ahead and create this file. So inside DevOps, we create a new folder let's call it hooks and i'm gonna add my file now in here let's go ahead and declare two new variables so export so we want to declare web directory this is where our project is placed And the reason why we're using export is so we don't have to redeclare this variable on any other script that includes uh, that's coming from uh, this file. So let's also do another one. And we want to know our user, the one that we're going to run our commands for. So it's going to be Ubuntu. So our first step, we want to go inside our web directory folder. Now, we want to change the user permissions. So if you guys watched my last video on how to deploy any Laravel application, then you would, this would be a little bit obvious for you. So we want to set, uh, we want to change the user to Ubuntu. And remember, we're inside this folder. So we're changing the access user from root to Ubuntu. And we want to also do the same thing for the storage folder, but we're going to use the triple W data user. Now we're going to also uh, change our permission. So we're going to give a U plus X and we're going to also do the same thing G plus W on the storage folder. Now, we want to install our composer dependencies. So to run it, to run any script as a Ubuntu user, a different user than the one we're currently as, we do sudo dash u for user and our username. So now we're running this script as Ubuntu. And we want to basically do composer install, no dev, no progress, and prefer DIST. Now we want to also uh, run some other scripts. So let's do artisan key generate. And let's also do uh, PHP artisan migrate. No interaction. And I would be very careful about placing a force flag here. These are all some basic commands that uh, we can run. In your scenario, let's say, for example, you want to install npm, then you want to simply run the command here. You want to also maybe, let's say, install passport if you're using that. But uh, yeah, so try running this few times. You should get some errors and uh, keep modifying the scripts until it works for your scenario. 
Now let's go ahead and commit and push our changes to our master branch. We can see here that our pipeline has passed. So let's go ahead and check code deploy. Let's refresh the page. And we can see that uh, our build failed. So let's click on it. And let's see why. So let's go to view events. And the after install, let's see the script here. Now, the errors we're getting here is that composer not found, PHP not found. We haven't configured our server yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, in this step, we're going to uh, configure our production server. We already uh, went through this in great detail in one of our last videos. We, uh, it was called uh, how to deploy any Laravel app using AWS. To save time, I'm going to just go through this part quick. Please watch the other video if you struggle on this part. So we're going to add a new script folder. And I'm going to add a file. And I'm going to say build production server dot sh now once that's done let's quickly configure our apache so let's first check what happened to our website so we said we mapped it to var ww and you can see that it's inside here remember this is coming from the deploy script that we built from our pipelines so let's go now to uh, modify apache so etc Apache and in here let's uh, go to sites available and I am using my IP address so I'm going to do IP dash A or actually was it IP A there's no dash and my IP address is right here my public IP so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to modify the default website configuration file so sudo nano zeros okay and let's go ahead and all what I want to do is just change the document root quickly. So let's just do that. So it was inside Laravel DevOps and it was inside our public folder. That's the document root. Let's go ahead and save all this. And let's see if that, uh, let's actually restart Apache first. And it would be Apache to restart. Now let's check what happened to our website. So let's go and open a new web page and let's see our IP address. Now we're getting this site cannot be reached error. And this is actually a good sign since it's a timeout. We know, we know that there is some connection, but remember, we didn't configure our EMV file. We didn't install our dependencies. So let's go ahead and uh, do that now. Now, if we take a look inside our var w, triple w and our Laravel project folder, remember, we did this mapping in the app uh, spec file. So we can see that our EMV file is not here. So we will need to uh, somehow load our EMV file in here without having to save it into our repository. This is where we would use the AWS uh, Secrets Manager. Now, before we get there, let's quickly prepare our EMV file for production. So let's open our code editor and let's uh, find our EMV file. So the first thing we want to do, we want to change the EMV to production, the debug to false, and my app URL is actually my IP address for the instance. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back to my code terminal and paste it here. Now for the database, I'm going to use our RDS instance. So let's pull that information out quickly. And this was the endpoint, which is the host. The username is admin, and let's add our password. And for our database, let's name it Laravel DevOps. We still have to create the database. 
let's uh, do that in our server so let's go back to our server and let's use my sql so it's gonna go like my sql dash h to specify the endpoint then dash u to specify the user admin and i'm gonna just copy the password then lowercase p to specify the password now if you don't have mysql installed let's quickly install that so we do sudo apt install mysql client core 8.0 Now, let's try running that again. So let's paste the password. And I think we didn't uh, give our EC2 access to our RDS instance. So let me just terminate this and uh, let me do IPA and let's grab our IP address. So we want to create a new security group for our RDS instance to allow access for our database. So let's go to EC2. From here, we're going to go to security groups and let's create a new security group and let's call it uh, production database access. And for the inbound rule, we want to select MySQL and we want to add the custom IP. So let's paste our IP address. Let's create the security group and let's go ahead and assign it to our RDS instance. So we want to click on databases and we want to modify this database. Now you're going to scroll down all the way till you get to the connectivity section. Remove the default security group and let's add the one we just created. Let's save this and let's apply this immediately. Now let's go back to our server then try again. So I need to copy the password again. Now we're connected. Let's go ahead and create our database. And let's call it Laravel DevOps. And the end of the Lolling Terminator. Let's exit. Now we're going to use the AWS Systems Manager to store our EMV file. So on the top, search for Systems Manager. And let's go ahead and create a new secret. So we want to scroll down and go to parameter store and create parameter and let's call this Laravel DevOps EMV now for the text we want to make sure this is a secure string and let's go ahead and uh, add our EMV file so that was inside our code editor And actually, let's keep this as a string. Now, let's go ahead and click create parameter. And if you click on it, you should be able to see your EMV file here. Now we need to give our EC2 instance access to the system manager to read our EMV file. So let's go to EC2 and let's go ahead and find our instance. So instances 
and let's click on our instance and in here you want to go to your i am role and we want to basically attach a new uh, policy so in here we want to do uh, add permission now for the service make sure you select the systems manager the action we only need the get parameters so let me search that out so here we need the get parameter and get parameters and that's it so the resources let's uh, actually let's just specify all resources and let's review our policy and let's call it uh, Laravel DevOps EMP let's create this policy now we should be able to access our service manager inside our EC2 instance now let's go back to our code editor and we want to basically uh, write a script where we would extend or sorry where we would pull our data from AWS so inside DevOps inside scripts let's create a new script and let's call it generate emv and let's erase all this now we need two parameters here actually so we're gonna call this file inside our after install sh now we already have these two variables exported so we can use them there so here is how we're gonna call this file So let's actually do it before the migration. So DevOps scripts generate emv.sh. Now let's go ahead and go to this file. And what we want to do is declare two new parameters or variables. So the first one would be the name of my EMV file or parameter now the region let's go back to our AWS and on the top here let's copy this now we're gonna use the AWS CLI to extract the EMV file so we're gonna use uh, AWS SSM get parameter And we have to specify the with decryption because our file is decrypted. Name and let's add the parameter. This is the file name. Now let's uh, add our region. Finally, let's. Uh, I forgot to add these here. Now let's uh, query parameter dot value this will basically return our emv file value instead of returning an object that aws would return so we're just querying the return object to give us the value so it's an array parameter then there is value and our emv file now let's uh, output text inside our web directory and we want to create our emv file so remember this variable is coming from the after install it's exported here actually this is wrong so i meant to say uh, prefer dist so let's fix that up now let's go ahead and commit and push our work to our master branch now again the deployment we were running failed so let's go ahead and quickly check why actually let's go uh, click on events and we're failing on the after install and in here we're getting connection refuse to our sql so i can tell from this error that our emv file is not correctly loaded so let's go ahead and check that out so let's uh, go back to our terminal and let's do ls-la and our emv file 
is right here let's go ahead and modify it and see we don't have our emv file loaded so this could be multiple things it could be a permission but let's go back to our code editor so the first thing i want to do is i want to clear laravel's configuration cache so first let's set the correct user permission for our emv file then let's uh, run uh, sudo dash u using our web user to clear our config cache now the second thing i want to do is i want to test this quickly out in uh, in our instance so i'm going to just copy the values here for now and our web directory was uh, r w w w laravel devops let's go ahead and copy all this and let's uh, execute it in our terminal now i might have misspelled my uh, name here so let me go ahead and go to uh, my systems manager and we want to go to parameter store and let's make sure we have the right name see here we have underscore so let's go ahead and quickly fix this so i'm gonna copy my uh, parameter name and let's add it here and for now we're just adding it here to run it on the terminal and i think i spelled parameter wrong so let me go ahead and fix this and let's just not forget that this is supposed to be lowercase so let's now go ahead and copy this and let's give it a try inside our terminal so let's clear all this and let's run this and let's view our emv file and see now we loaded our emv file let's go back to our script and let's change those values quickly so we want to replace this with the parameter and this with our region and that and this part it's coming from uh, our hooks after install the web director so let's add that here now let's go ahead and push our work now after running our build we managed to get it to work from the bitbucket side so let's check our aws let's go to code deploy and you can see here our push passed so we managed to deploy this let's check our uh, s3 instance or cloud storage so we have it right here laravel devops in, in bundles and you can see this is all our bundles so far remember since i am not uh, bringing in my composer file it's only 13.2 megabytes but once you start adding your vendor files this is gonna go into gigabytes easily now finally let's go check what happened to our ec2 instance and let's uh, go ahead and uh, open this instance actually that's not gonna work because of https so we gotta do it with http so see we're getting the default laravel page so let's go ahead and make a change so i'm gonna close all uh, so i'm going to close all this and let me go to my welcome.blade and let's go ahead and add a change somewhere here so i'm gonna add the h1 tag and let's say uh, final let's go ahead and uh, push our changes and now you can see that the build passed and the code deploy it's uh, let's see it passed so now we should see our change and here you go it's working thank you for watching if you guys found this video useful then feel free to give it a thumbs up also we're releasing a new video every week on sunday so don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our latest uh, training videos 
Also, if you have any questions, feel free to post it down on the comments below.